Back on the curb at 115. Mr. Polson, um, you applied for a job with the Secret Service, he said, back in uh, January of 2016. Is that correct? Yes. And this incident occurred on 10 March 2016, right? Yes. So you were approximately uh, three, March of May, um, two months into the application process when this event occurred, is that correct? It is not, sir. Um, the application is different than you might uh, imagine for that. It's you submit the actual online application and then you wait to hear back. So is that what you were referring to? The, I was the waiting, January? It was a waiting period, yes. Okay. So the actual written application for USA Jobs was submitted in January, but then it was a waiting period after that. But you intended to, I mean, you wanted to get a job with the Secret Service. Yes, I did. Why? It was always a dream, sir. Was there an increase in salary? There is an increase with salary. Ratio-wise, is the TSA, is the uh, Secret Service salary about double than the TSA salary? What what would we like clarified? Um, Mr. Posen was part time at TSA. He's full time at. So I'm trying to get, oh, you, really? get the information that you want. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. So a lot of someone told no one told me this before. You were part time with TSA. That is correct. Thank you. The salary with, S with Secret Service full-time is undoubtedly higher than part-time with TSA, correct? That is correct. That was a, that was a shocker. Okay. So the salary with TSA, from my understanding, it was not much. I don't know. In, in the big scheme of things. Salary was. In the big scheme of things, it was, it, you know, it's... It was small. It was small. Every little bit for help, the, for help the hurts and counts and, yeah. For the area, it was it wasn't enough to to be the only source of income. What other sources of income did you have? I was in the reserves as well, Air Force Reserves. Mm -hmm. Did that provide you with, as as a percentage of your gross income, could you say then that TSA was half or two thirds, and then Air Force was one third, or could you kind of give a ratio? And I'm and I'm trying to be sensitive to your personal information, Mr. Paulson, and not go and start banding about salary numbers or whatever else because that the exact number like that shouldn't be relevant I don't think um, I want I want kudos for being a nice guy let's move on sorry oh great kudos. yeah thank you very much <laughs> no I think I no I'll get, I'll get credit in heaven let's move on I nodded nodded <laughs> yes yes the question you still want the ratio I would though okay um, at the time I wasn't relying upon that as a salary anyways I wasn't living on my own Okay. Um, I didn't move out of my parents, so when I got out of active duty, I went back and lived in my parents' house um, because I couldn't find enough income, especially with part-time jobs that I was getting, to afford my own apartment in the area for Fairfax County. Um, so at the time, I was still living with my parents, so the income for TSA wasn't something, it was something I was able to get through doing my own stuff and kind of have fun on my own time, but it wasn't something I was relying upon in any means. I don't know if your parents were able to do this or not, but um, was the were you able to um, have them more or less help you out? I guess with the wasn't the Affordable Care Act. You can be. I'm not sure how old you are. If you're still on the insurance for them or not, but I have no idea. Are you still on the insurance? I'm not. Okay. Um, but anyway, you were able to stay with them. Oh, during what period were you still living there, please? Um, from the time I got out of active duty was March of 2015, or February, February of 2015, 
um, until December of 2016. As part of the application, I'm sorry, you said just through December 2016, right? Correct. Okay. As part of the application for Secret Service, do you have to fill out any standardized forms? For the application, we fill out the, uh, the USA Jobs application. It's all pre-filled. You just answer the questions on USA Jobs. I, okay don't have to actually like make my own form or anything. Is there at some point you fill out an SF-85 form? We fill out an SF-86 that I recall as a security document. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what an SF-85 would be? I don't know what an SF-85 was. I thought it was an SF-80, I maybe it's SF-86. There are, there are multiple layers that depends okay. on security. I, I, would, I was, thought it was an SF-86, my mistake. I stand corrected. Um, what does an SF-86 uh, contain? Uh, it's a security questionnaire is what it's defined as. Okay. Does it cover pending cases like this one? I don't recall. I, I remember there was a, a court section, but I don't, I think it was more along of uh, yes or no questions on have you ever been charged with a, a felony? Uh, Stuff like that. I don't recall exact phrasing in any form. Was anyone else aware of your applying to the Secret Service? Uh, my parents were. Uh, I had done the application with a coworker because he and I were both trying to get in using uh, the veterans' preference that we still had. Um, so a coworker from TSA had referred me to the position. Um, other than that, I mean. I never really specified it with anybody until after I actually received the class start. Who who was the coworker? Jay. I, I remember him as Jay. Do you remember his last name, or is that his initial, or his nickname, or what? His first name was Jay, like J A Y. Okay. Jay. Do you know his last name? I don't recall his last name. Do you know what he did? What his job was? He was the same position as I was at the checkpoints because he was in my same training class. At, um, with, uh, with uh, the TSO training class? TSO training class. Did you keep in touch with people from the TSO training class? I don't keep constant contact. It's more of we're friends on Facebook, so I see what they update on their Facebook page. I don't. How many of the people from your training class did you keep friends with on Facebook? After my employment with TSA? During or, during or after at any time? Maybe three. Okay, and Jay was one of those three? Uh, Jay, Jay is one I have on, uh, is a friend on Facebook. And he's still on Facebook with you? The last time I checked, I don't think I, we've removed each other. Okay. Did, um, is he, have you discussed any part of this case with Jay? I have not. And you don't know his last name? No. Is his last name listed on Facebook? It might be. Would you have, would your looking up your Facebook friends be in your control? Yes. So if you wanted to find out his name, you'd be able to look it up there? I could probably find his last name if it was listed on Facebook. Does Mr. Wetzel, uh, is he, Mr. Wetzel is a Facebook friend of yours now, correct? I believe so, yes. Does he have, um, do you know any, any other email or Facebook handle for him or any other, anything else that relates to his identity? No. You don't have a Facebook handle? He doesn't have a Facebook account? Does he or do I? Does he? Does, yes, because he's my, I believe him to be a friend of my Facebook page. Okay, so he has a Facebook account? Yes. Do you know his Facebook handle? I do not know what it is off the top of my head. It should be his first or last name. But you could look, you could go to your Facebook account and look that up, right? Correct? I would be able to, yes. So that would be in your control? I would agree. So if you didn't have 
his name, his address or phone number as far as contact information in that list we were looking at before in your Rule 26 disclosures? Would, was there anything preventing you from putting his Facebook information in there? Uh, I don't recall it asking for a Facebook contact. It asked for names and phone, for addresses and phone numbers. Um, you put no information. Would it be, in your opinion, relevant to do the best you can? If it's asking for an address and or phone number, I wouldn't have provided a Facebook contact. It wouldn't have been relevant. Did you make any attempts to retain any evidence with any of your social media? You mentioned, I think, was it Facebook and Tumblr or Instagram? I have a, I have a Tumblr account. Did you make any attempts to retain any information uh, and the ESI, which is electronically stored information, any, did you make any attempts to retain any ESI from any of your social media uh, after this incident? For one. What, um, what would you like, counsel? Uh, well, first of all, that question is too broad. So if you're asking him if he had any, did he try to retain evidence related to this case? I'll help you out there. Yeah. I want to be fair. That, that's what I was trying to go to. I'm not really, I'm not caring about. I don't know what, I don't even do Facebooks. So I don't even know what the, you know, I don't know what you friend or don't friend or, you know, keep track of bonus points at auto shops. Um, was there any information related to this case? And that's the only top, that's the only framing of any questions that I have. Um, that you attempted to retain um, from your social media accounts? There was no information regarding this case on any social media. Did you put? Did you make any any request uh, at the time to meaning around March of 2016, or and then a few months afterwards, to me two or three months afterwards, to have them suspend any deleting of information so that that could, so what you just said could be confirmed? You mean having the social media actual company suspend? Yeah. I I did not. Did you make any screen captures of any of your message traffic with any of your friends on Facebook or, or uh, Tumblr? There was no traffic regarding this case on any social media. Did you make any copies of any, um, of any of your traffic at the time to be able to demonstrate what you just said? There was nothing to take a screenshot of. You had no, tra you had no message traffic at all with any of your friends in the six months after this incident from starting on March 10, 2016? In regards to this case, there was nothing. That wasn't my question, Mr. Paulson. Did, was there any, did you have any message traffic on social media with any of your friends for six months after this case? I would s guess yes. I typically try to reach out on birthdays, and I would imagine that there was probably a birthday within that six month time frame. Did you make any attempts to document and retain any of your message traffic so that if it was later a question, if you were or were not discussing topics related to this case, that it could be shown one way or another definitively? I made an active. I actively did not speak about this case on any social media to the extent that I would not need to retain any information or screenshots or messages. What proof do you have of that? I'm here to speak of it under oath. Isn't that also possibly considered self-serving? Excuse me? Isn't that possibly considered self-serving? Uh, can you define self-serving to me for, me for this context? Doesn't it, you're saying it, but you don't have any independent proof of it. So if you weren't being truthful, which I hope you are, but if you weren't being truthful, there'd be no evidence because the evidence was not retained, correct? If there is no evidence, there is nothing to retain. There is no, okay. Was there, um, did you have a cell phone at the time on March 10th, 2016? I did. Did you make any attempts to retain any text messages or other message traffic on your cell phone during the time after this case? Uh, upon receiving the subpoena and request to uh, keep all documentation, I, I looked through, but there was nothing, no conversations were ever made regarding this case. Did you, uh, 
uh, have any contact with anyone from T. When was the first time after this incident that you had any contact with TSA regarding this case? Uh, the first time I was called into legal's office at Dulles Airport, the TSA attorney there was Mr. Noonan. And when was that, please? I don't remember the date, sir. Can I was still employed with TSA at the time. So that would have been made it before tw September 2016, correct? I would believe so, yes. And would, uh, when you're having that discussion with Mr. Noonan, uh, you had not had any other discussions regarding this case with anyone between March 10, 2016 and September, whatever date it was, 2016? It was not a case. And even at that moment, he said it was a possibility of something being filed within the District Court of Alexandria. It was just a simple, here's a heads up that something might be coming your way. It was, nothing else was given. Um. Was there a, uh, even before the case, were there any discussions regarding um, retaining evidence that you had with TSA between March 10, 2016 and September 2016? No. So you, so you never discussed this case with anyone from TSA in any capacity between 10 March 2016, not including, 10 March 2016 and afterwards? To the best of my knowledge, I did not. Do you still believe that there was no request to press charges against you uh, made by me on uh, 10 March 2016? There was a request. I'm sorry. That form, and I'm just making that form because that's a miscalculation. Okay. You never said that there, that you never made the request. It's in his statement. Okay. Are Sorry. you talking about uh, maybe you want to use another word? I'm just for some reason. Can you read back my question, please, so I can rephrase it? Do you still believe there was no request to press charges against you made by me on 10 March 2016? Okay. Let me try a better stab at that. Uh, do you believe? Do you believe that I? claimed I wanted to press charges against you via statements that I made on March 26, 10 March 2016? Yes. Would, do you believe that those charges, do you understand the difference between civil and criminal charges? I believe I have a general understanding, but I have not been trained on either difference in a legal standpoint. They're both charges, correct? I would agree. <laughs> you go to court for either one is my understanding. That's the main difference being... Did you make... Sorry. Oh, please go ahead. Did you make any efforts to retain any information related to this case, related to potential charges, civil or criminal? Uh, to help exonerate you in case of those charges? I did not on that day. Did you make any attempts afterwards? Um, after receiving the actual documentation of this being a case, um, it was notified that anything I had I should retain, and I, I searched and I retained anything that would be relevant. You did not, I believe you said before, you did not make any requests to retain any of the video? I said I do not recall making a request. There was one video provided over to me by TSA. Um, how did that video get retained, do you know? I do not. Do you know how that one video was selected? I do not. Do you know any chain of custody about that video? I don't know. Do you know any, where does provenance, and I learned this, any provenance of the video related to has it been altered 
um, in any means like this? Uh, to my knowledge, it has not been altered, but I am not aware of anything with the video anyways. I haven't seen it. So you deny that you used excessive force against me during the pat-down on 10 March 2016, correct? That is correct. Do TSA regulations permit use of excessive force in passenger pat-downs? Again, I do not recall any specific regulations on excessive force being taught in training or provided in SOP. Um, I would make a, in my opinion, general statement that there's, they would expect all officers to act in a professional manner. So would you agree based on that, that, that TSA regulations do not permit use of excessive force against passengers during pat-downs? I, I couldn't speak to that, sir. Um, do you deny that you were placed under citizen's arrest on allegations of federal sexual, of felony sexual battery by me on 10 March 26? I do not recall being placed under any citizen's arrest on 10 March 2016. You'd made the statement before that if from your experience as a Secret Service officer that you relay custody of suspects over to local police if it were outside of your jurisdiction, correct? No, that is not correct. Can you please correct me then? What is, what is the policy regarding transfers of custody to uh, local police? Uh, we, so for me, if I, if I make an arrest, um, specifically on domestic violence, um, for an example, if um, there was a domestic violence at home and I was off duty, um, I would be able to detain that person, contact the police, and the local police would respond. I would then provide a witness statement, not a law enforcement or any other aspect to it and then they would make the actual arrest of that individual. Would you have already placed that person into custody? Yes. In what capacity? I would have put him in handcuffs or... Uh, let me, I'm sorry, let me clarify my question. Would you put, it, I put him into custody as, in your capacity as a Secret Service agent, law enforcement officer, or individual person on the street? I would understand it as my capacity as a law enforcement officer. Do you have limits on the, on the jurisdiction um, of your law enforcement authority? Yes. What are those limits and how, how does it work? Um, Title 18 uh, USC 3056 Alpha gives me my specific United States Secret Service Uniform Division powers similar to and of DC police, meaning I have DC code that I can enforce as well as federal code as a Secret Service officer. So therefore, any federal laws broken, I can make an arrest upon and anything within DC against a DC code would be something I can make an arrest on. So anything that is not one of those codes, can you still make an arrest? I would feel uncomfortable doing so. What if it were a felony, you mentioned before, a felony um, crime occurred in front of you? Would you, not that you would make an arrest, okay? So not questioning, you know, I don't want to put you under the spot for that because that's situational. There could be a lot of reasons why you would or wouldn't uh, based upon who's doing the harming and who's being harmed. But who, but would you have the authority to make an arrest? Uh, if it were outside of your jurisdiction? I do not believe I would. Okay. 
Do you agree that such a thing as a citizen's arrest exists? I have not been trained on a legal standpoint of citizen's arrest. Do you have an opinion whether a citizen's arrest exists in common law? Yes. Do you have an opinion on whether citizen's arrest exists in the United States? Yes. How can I help you, counsel? You're asking for a legal conclusion. I'm going to make those objections. Okay. So okay. 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 I'm, I'm just, I'm trying. No, no, it's fine. I, if I could clarify something, I am trying to clarify. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, I'm, I don't believe I'm asking for a legal conclusion. I'm asking for, I'm not asking about the, the uh, efficacy of a uh, citizen's arrest. I'm not asking for other details. I'm asking generally, um, have you ever heard the term citizen's arrest being used? Yes. Under what, in what capacity or what circumstances did you hear that, the, the term citizen's arrest being used? You've been speaking about it numerously today. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard about it anywhere else? <laughs> um, I have believe I've read uh, books about it, um, with it within the context of the book, but not as a legal or teaching and research purpose. So if someone were to say they were placing you under citizen's arrest, would your opinion be to disregard them as not knowing what they're talking about? No. Will you take the claim of being under citizen's arrest seriously? If I understood what was going on, I could take different actions based upon it. If you were being alleged of, uh, for a felony sexual battery, would that be a serious allegation, in your opinion? It is a serious allegation. Would you, uh, if you were uh, accused of felony sexual battery, what actions would you take um, if you cl if someone had claimed they had put you under fel under citizen's arrest, as so my standpoint would be as the suspect um, or the victim, sir. I didn't understand the question. In that as context. the suspect, as the suspect of someone who committed a felony sexual assault upon someone else. Yes. And that uh, someone else is saying that I am under citizen's arrest. Yes. Um, and there are police present. Not yet, but let's say at some point there are afterwards. Um, am, I am I detained in any capacity? Yes. Okay, what capacity am I detained in? You've been placed under felony citizen's arrest. So by detained, I mean like, am I free to move? Am I restrained in any way? Am I cornered? You've been asked to stay there until the police arrive. I would not take that as a serious arrest of any form. If there's still freedom of movement, then I wouldn't even feel detained. Would you, if this were to happen outside of work, would you react differently than you would at work as for the TSA? No. Do you think that your role as a TSO uh, granted you special immunities? No. Did it grant you special privileges? Yes. What privileges did it grant you? I was given a clearance and ability to see the inner workings of the TSA and how to screen passengers appropriately for travel. What clearance did you receive? Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the TSA clearance is like public trust or something. My military clearance that I still had was higher than what TSA gave. What military clearance did you have? Uh, coming out of active duty, I retained a secret clearance. A secret clearance? That is correct. Is that still active? No. Well, my military clearance of secret is active, and now I have a TSSEI for Secret Service. When did you submit the um, information for your TSSCI? What is SCI? Special compartmentalized information. Okay. And that's something, what is that, please? Um, special compartmentalized information, or SCI, would be uh, special programs within that level of clearance that you learn about and therefore have a need to know and the actual clearance to access it. So it gives you the ability to learn about new programs within your area that require clearance. Okay. 